Hey there, so today I want to talk a little bit about Howard Chaikin, and I want to talk about controversy in the present, and really when I'm talking about that, you know it's going to roll well into the future, but in order to get there, we need to build a foundation in the past, we need to talk about everything, which really where it came from and on. So what we're talking about here is the comic offering from Image called Divided States of Hysteria. Six issues supposed to offend all of the right people, notice the words there, all of the right people. What we're talking about are images from Trump's America, the not-too-distant future wherein all of the things that you hear talked about, those bigots and racists and transphobes and on, well, they're taking over and this is what they're going to make manifest. Not only is that an insult in itself, but it really speaks to the mindset of people like this. Really, when you're looking at Howard Chaikin, he thought he would get applause for this. He thought those people would go out and say, wow, that was controversial, but, and he thought he would offend, again, all of the right people. Instead, because of the shade of his skin and really his qualifiers, he was told that using trans folks within this, that was tokenism, that he couldn't do that. Talking about people like people of color, well, he can't do that because, again, qualifiers are all wrong. That should say something to someone like that, but again, they just roll with it because, hey, they think that that's par for the course. Isn't that had a telling thing when you look at that. Again, beyond that, too, when you look at Image Comics, when you see not only what they offer, but what they wouldn't. And beyond that, they'll actually issue an apology. We'll look at that. Look at the wording within it. They talk about empathy and understanding. They talk about respecting things like religion. Well, they don't apply that to everyone. And the hypocrisy that that breeds, again, I find that astounding. And I also find it baffling when you look at it. But anyhow, let's look at this article article here. This is from Bleeding Cool. Now, this does not pick up at the beginning. What we are doing is looking at the apex of controversy, and there's more controversy surrounding this. They briefly mention it, but what I'm wanting to do is segue to the apology, but what I want you to do is see what these people threw out there and thought was acceptable, because Howard Chaikin, again, he imagined that this would get him applause. So, they're talking about the divided states of hysteria, number four quote, which depicts a brown-skinned man hanging from a noose, his genitals mutilated, and a racial slur written on his name tag. Now, can you imagine being so woke that you think that people are going to applaud you for that? They think it'll be controversial, but then the caveat, but, but, it is something else. They thought that would come. They didn't think that that would be a bridge too far. It's also telling to me that the people supposedly decrying racism are the ones drawing black men hanging in this day and age with their genitals mutilated and they're again wearing a racial slur. That tells me something about these people. They imagine the world like that. So can you imagine what they see out there in day-to-day -day occurrence? Can you see that visualization. That's why these people talk about things like Nazis, and they talk about punching them, and really why that kind of verbiage is scary, because when you break that down, you can see, again, what they imagine in the not-too-distant future, and what they're throwing out there as a rallying cry. I mean, what was the intent for this? Beyond applause, this is supposed to get people talking about it, but it's also supposed to get people angry, and within anger, there's reaction, and what type of reaction do you think there's going to be? Voting, sure, but beyond that, what other types of reactions do you think this could inspire? But continuing down here, the divided states of hysteria came under fire earlier this month as well for an interior scene depicting the violent beating of a transsex worker. However, Image seemingly celebrated that controversy with a press release announcing a second printing touting the industry conversation sparked by the cover and featuring a supportive statement of the value of publishing the comment from Image publisher Eric Stevenson. Now, they were talking about how this really sparks people to talk about things and the value of the comic. Now, what if they come out in support of, besides something like this? Really, again, this is because they believe this ideology, so you can see how they allowed this to transpire. Also, again, we're talking about the hypocrisy of image within it, which we will get to a little bit in the future here. We, uh, continuing here, we talked yesterday about some uh, image creators who spoke out uh, against the cover, and there are more who have done so. 
And then you get this, uh, you know, basically all these people that are decrying this, telling you how horrible it is. Oh, look, there's Gail Simone. I don't think people will be surprised to discover I find Chaikin's cover repulsive, but I do. Yep, woke people, they hate you there. Here's Sophie Campbell, a.k.a. the person that said, if I had a murder button and I could push it, you know, they would kill all the GOP members and then take a nap. Well, this person wants to decry a cover from Howard Chaikin. I find that interesting. And so on. You see all the people that come out here. So many people filled with so much hatred, and yet they call this person human garbage and on. So you can see exactly what happened here. And that, again, was that bridge too far. This caused Image to come out and say, hey, wait a minute, maybe we need to say something. And they apologized. To quote Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Going forward with this, this is the image apology that they issue after that. Now, I want to go through a lot of this because I want you to look at the wording to this. I want you to compare it to what's transpiring now, the attitudes that we see reflected from people like Eric Larson, and really see if the words match up for you. So here we go. Image Comics and Howard Chaikin would like to apologize over the distress caused by the cover to the divided states of hysteria number four. Now, interestingly, too, I just want to note, Eric Larson says this is not an apology either. This is a clarification, even though it apparently uses the words apologize. Apparently, that's not the intent here. But let's continue. It's a neither Howard's nor Image's intent to inflict pain on anyone already dealing with intolerance or hostility on a personal level. We all agree that any form of bigotry is wrong, and this comic exists due to the anger and frustration over rapidly escalating injustice in a world filled with people too quick to judge others on the basis of their race, religion, or gender association. The uh, purpose of this series is to sound alarms. The Divided States of Hysteria is a comic book about the terrifying future we are headed for if our country remains on its current path. Far from an endorsement of the horrible violence depicted or the ugly, ugly language used by many of the characters, Howard's goal is to give us a glimpse into a society crumbling under the weight of ignorance, hatred, and intolerance. It's unsettling, to be sure, but it's difficult to convey the horrors of a world gone wrong with without also showing what it looks like. People have described the cover to Divided States Number 4 as distasteful, and they're right in that. All hate crimes are horrifying, dehumanizing, and distasteful, and the intent of this cover was to challenge people to look at what we as a society have become. What we as a society have become. I mean, really, can you imagine that statement there? Can you imagine going out of your way to truly say something like that, to say that we have regressed as a society to the point with their imaginary hate crime. Again, they took a picture of a black man. They hung him from a sign in a modern day city. They mutilated his genitals and they put some kind of disparaging wording on them as well. That was what they threw out there. And they want to say that right there, that is a reflection of what is going on right here and now. Continuing, every hate crime is perpetuated Perpetuated under the cover of willful ignorance because there is always someone content to turn away from what is really happening or label shameful truths as alternative facts. What's more, ignoring that these hate crimes exist and that they're happening right now, watering down in any way how bad things have become, seems like a cop-out like turning a blind eye at a time when we all need to be paying attention. So you can see where this is coming from, what they're trying to say here. But let's finish all of this out. At its heart, the divided states of hysteria is revenge fiction set against the backdrop of a nation on the brink of collapse with the greedy and corrupt people who brought it to that point in the crosshairs. You know who they're talking about in the crosshairs. Well, I would encourage you to go and really check that out. If you really want to see who the greedy and corrupt are, well, go and look at what they look like because, again, you see what the message is. You see who they're trying to appease. So you should go and look at the reflection to all of the bad guys there. But continuing, if it was just a book meant to uh, be 
provocative for the sake of being provocative, Image would not be publishing it. Sure they would. They would definitely do that. But beyond that, if it was something that was meant to stir the pot in some other way, they also wouldn't produce it. Because, you know, again, hypocrisy. But continuing, this series is supposed to make people angry about what's happening in the world right now, and it's supposed to make people want to fight back and resist the very real oppression bearing down on us all. Interesting that you could put a book out like this within a mainstream setting and still say that really you are being oppressed within it. That this right here, it's not being silenced. You know what silenced this book here? Well, if you're going to look at the sales totals, because really controversy was the only thing pushing it. Beyond that, the thing that silenced it, well, it was the company and the artists themselves. When they went out and they decided to say these things, they decided to put them out. And again, becoming more and more woke. They're the people who ended up tripping over their own feet because they took to the ideological dance floor and their partners there. Well, those individuals, they're extremists. Now, the next two paragraphs here, they're basically talking about, hey, we're going to replace that cover. And then they get to this last statement, continuing on the last paragraph here. This is one I like to return to again and again because they threw this out here and really think about how ugly this is when you look at it saying things like all members of our readership and them talking about empathy and understanding and yet what they throw out there as representative of their company. So let's finish this. While Image as a company is committed to free speech and artistic expression, we also recognize our responsibility to be sensitive to all members of our readership. We listen to all feedback from our creators, from our retail partners, from our readers, but Image Comics recognizes that we could have responded to readers' concerns about the graphic nature of this cover more quickly and with more empathy and understanding. We apologize for not doing so sooner. So there you have exactly what happened. You have the issue at hand. You have their response. Really kind of a reflect on that with everything else that we run into. Every time I talk about the company, remember they took this standard with one thing, but they don't take that standard with other things because, of course, only certain people are humanized out there. Interesting when they talk about people having their humanity threatened, they essentially talk about the monsters on display, and yet when they as a company on this stage when they take to that and they put out the messages they do really, who looks like they're being threatened there? Who looks like it's okay to go out and well, punch a Nazi. Who's doing the punching? Who's getting punched within that? But anyhow, let's continue on to what's going on now. All right, so we are at the present, but before we really get into this, I want to give kudos to Robert Willing. Robert Willing helps out time and again with stuff. He actually was in a live stream. It should be cut today. Had some issues with it with YouTube, but it's about IDW, and it's about one of the franchises they own. Very good stuff. Really helps out with that, but kudos to him again. I appreciate his help there. But now looking at this, this is Stephanie Cook. Now, Stephanie Cook is one of those people that takes to the ideological pulpit time and again to decry, well, comic consumers and anyone else that disagrees with them. Within this, too, apparently, Howard Chaykin does not make the cut because, you know, oh, he's a terrible human being. Why? Because he was too woke, and when he was too woke, he is the wrong shade of qualifier, basically. But let's look at this. Stephanie Cook, um, who at Marvel thought it was a good idea to put Howard Chaykin, creator of the incredibly offensive and horrific Divided states of hysteria on an upcoming issue of Captain America. Who could we put on a book about a wholesome hero who believes in always doing the right thing and being the best person? Howard Chaykin is available. I see no problems and won't bother to do any up-to-date research on this creator to counteract this. I'm very tired of your shit comics. Very interesting to throw that third statement out there when you're looking at that. I'm very tired of your shit comics. I'm very tired of it too. I'm very tired of you placating the wrong people. I'm very tired of so many issues out there. But I do find it interesting. These people, they basically eat their own. And you want to see how they eat their own? Well, let's look at that next statement. Continuing. The fourth thing that comes up upon searching Howard Chaykin is an entire article about the transphobic nature of, well, we talked about the works. Like, look up the fact that Chaykin is an out, as outdated and problematic was beyond 
easy to do. So he is outdated and he is problematic. That is lovely, lovely language. But saying who brought this up, well, let's look at these lovely people here too. White dudes, I'm a guessing white dudes. I'm guessing the same thing. Sigh, sigh, sigh. Wait, Akira Yoshida is a white dude? They're talking about C.B. Sobolski. That is its own thing. But if you don't know about it, look it up because they like to say pin name equals yellow face. Very interesting stuff there. Whispers. Comics are the worst there. This is like letting Frank Miller write Miss Marvel. Yeah, because Frank Miller, he's one of those monsters they love to spit on to. In fact, if you want me to talk about Frank Miller sometime and some of the things that these people have tried to do to him, let me know. I would actually enjoy doing that as well. And one more comment to close on. I'm going to roll down here. Yep, that move has instantly taken all the goodwill Wade has built up over the course of his run on Cap and set it all on fire. Now, maybe these people are reading a different Captain America story that I've been checking out, but what I essentially saw there, well, it was Howard Chaykin on display, only without all of the violence and brutality. It's still the same message there, but you know what? At least Mark Wade, he can sit and he can kowtow correctly, and when these people get on to him, when he say makes something like Strange Fruit, which is essentially the same thing that Howard Chaykin tried to do in certain ways with certain images. When you look at some of the things that he threw out there on the stage, these people, when they chastised him, well, he reacted differently. And well, they didn't at least blow up his career. But they tried to. They tried to for a couple of years, but they let it blow over because he has at least performed penance correctly. So anyway, I find this interesting. I find the controversy surrounding not only that series, but how it's going to move forward very telling because you can can never placate individuals like this. They will always try to eat you alive. Perhaps people should learn from that, and perhaps they should start drifting back toward the center, where in comic books they are really enjoyable. You know, when superheroes, they could superhero. When horror stories, they were horror stories, and we didn't have things like political ideology trying to go out and trying to maneuver us into hurting one another another. Because really, at its crux, that's what we saw here. Companies and authors and whatnot, I mean, you see how they reward themselves for it. They basically have that blow up in their face. People never forget about it, and yet they learn nothing. All right, anyhow, I'm finished with this right here, but what do you think about that? Don't you find it kind of humorous in a way to see that? Don't you find this whole thing of trying to be a little too woke kind of funny in some type of retrospect? And don't you see Mark Wade in that too when he looks at that can't you see mark wade in the howard shaken there when you compare certain things but anyhow i'm finished here thank you